Right, so if anything is going to come to define Labour's campaign for this general election, Victoria Derbyshire's interview with Starmeroid Shadow Business Secretary Jonathan Reynolds demonstrated exactly what that was. And the big thing the media now clearly, as well as other parties, will fixate on is Starmer's non-existent relationship with the truth. Starmer has got such a massive litany of lies to his name now that every one of them, as many of us on the left knew they would eventually, are going to catch up with him now and be used against him and pointed out that if he has lied so often about so much that he is inherently so dishonest, how can you believe anything he promises now in his bid for power? And as Reynolds showed and Victoria Derbyshire exposed, Labour don't seem to be able to answer this. Why should voters trust Sir Keir Starmer, whether it's his five missions or his six first steps, when he's either ditched or rolled back on so many of his original promises? They should look at Keir Starmer and say, here is someone who has turned around the Labour Party. No, 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 in no, no. sorry, you completely ignored the question. You completely ignored my question. Why should they trust him when he's ditched or rolled back so many of his original promises. I, I don't think that's true. I think he stood for the that's Labour Party. absolutely true. Saying he could be a Labour that's Prime Minister. That's absolutely true. When no. he wanted... Well, let me just give you some examples, if I may, Mr Reynolds. When he wanted to become Labour leader, he said he would abolish tuition fees. He said he would defend freedom of movement. All gone. Then he promised there would be this big offer of £28 billion a year for the green transition. He's rolled back on that. They, those are just three examples. There are more. He has put forward a set of missions that he wants to achieve no, in government. you're ignoring we, my no, question. No, no, but let me just finish the point. No, on let, things like the 28 I, I'd billion, be really grateful if you could answer the question. 28 Why billion was not possible after Liz Truss. It wasn't. Interest rates were not the same after that mini budget. We've got to be honest with people and say, these are our ambitions, but this is how we're going to deliver them. And when you've got a situation like that, there was simply no way we could do that. But look at what we're proposing on GB Energy, on a National Wealth Fund, on real ambition ambition on net zero to get the economic benefits of that for the UK. Okay, let me give you some other examples. Let me give you some other examples, which are nothing to do with the the economic outlook. Workers' rights. Originally, you were going to ban zero hours contracts. That's not happening anymore. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. Absolutely, no, no, it is. No, it no, is. you're not banning zero hour, hour yes, contracts. We, we had this we whole are, conversation we are with union leaders. Exploitative zero hours contracts. That There's is part of our new deal for working people. You were going to abolish the House of Lords. That's free. You're not doing that anymore. Well, look, those, no. those are some more examples. And I come back to the question, why should voters trust Sir Keir Starmer to do what he says he's going to do this time? Because he has a record of public service and he has a record of how he has transformed the Labour Party. He's got a record that of dropping his pledge. Right. So that was Victoria Darish there, one of very few current affairs presenters on the BBC Worth Rating, holding Jonathan Reynolds' feet to the fire so much they were practically toasted over Keir Starmer's record of lies as he became Labour leader, and Reynolds tried all the politicians' tricks to deflect and talk about something else. But she was having absolutely none of it. Who did Reynolds think she was, anyway? Laura Coonsberg? And she had the file. She didn't have to dig that deep, and I wouldn't imagine to expose just how much Starmer has lied about. Reynolds was asked why should people trust Keir Starmer when he has rolled back on so many things, and he couldn't answer that. He tried to talk about Starmer turning around the Labour Party, and what he has done is turn it into another Tory party and denied change and choice to the entire country by aping the Tories and cooing their donors. Starmer calls himself the change candidate now at that, but that's a sick joke because he is absolutely more of the same. Reynolds also tried to claim that Starmer hasn't gone back on his word and when pushed about claims that the damage to the economy has forced their hands to make changes, as ever this is an economic lie in itself because there is always money. And there would be plenty available for the government to access, especially if they increase taxes by levying a wealth tax on the rich. But they won't do that because they are Tories. And when they won't touch their money but will keep hammering us, we know who they really intend to serve. And if you're still in denial about that, keep asking that question of why they won't instigate a wealth tax to put the country back on its feet. Derbyshire put Reynolds through the ringer, reeling off all manner of broken pledges and promises. And of course, some of these go back years before the trust budget, which remains Labour's convenient scapegoat goat for scrapping so many of their ideas and plans, and includes stuff that, as Derbyshire also pointed out, wouldn't cost anything to implement anyway. So why go back on them? A classic example of that is scrapping the House of Lords. Get rid of that, instigate an elected Senate instead, an elected upper chamber, saving us money and ditching this preposterous concept of life peers and hereditary peers, which is completely undemocratic. Starmer promised it. Now he's binned it. And there is literally no excuse for doing so. The list of things Starmer once promised and has gone back on is sizable, though. 
and it will be a ball and chain to hammer Starmer with over and over again throughout this campaign. He promised a 5% tax on high earners, but he now won't do it. He promised to abolish universal credit and replace it with a benefit system that actually works and treats people like human beings. That's out too. Now he's keeping it. He was going to end benefit sanctions, but they're gone as well. He pledged to defend the NHS. Now he wants more privatisation involved in it. Having once upon a time cited his own mother, a nurse, as his reason for shunning private health and backing the NHS. Amazing what tens of thousands of pounds in private health donations seems to be able to do to change someone's mind and go back on their word over that. He also promised to roll back outsourcing, but given that word has been covered for privatisation within the NHS, and he wants more private sector involvement, that's out as well. He was going to abolish tuition fees, but just like Nick Clegg's Lib Dems back in 2010, he's gone back on that too. He had a £28 billion flagship Green New Deal on the table for years, and that got dumped. The environment clearly secondary, not least underlined very recently by Labour voting against a Lib Dem motion to clean up our polluted waterways. Starmer is also on record as allegedly having said he hates tree huggers when presented with a green energy deal planned by Ed Miliband. He plans for GB Energy to be created, a nationalised green energy generator and distributor, but it won't be a supplier to us. It'll supply the same privatised energy companies we have now, so they'll get the benefits of a socialised energy distributor to maximise their profits, probably increase them, because the savings will not trickle down to us, despite what Labour says they think will happen. Because trickle-down economics has never worked. These profits, they never get trickle, they never trickle down to us. And he also won't reverse Sunak's new oil and gas licences, despite promising no more of them. He promised no more illegal wars. He is happy to play dress up in fatigues and support Israel committing genocide in Gaza. Possibly the single most poignant issue causing Labour damage to its voter base today. And having declared himself long ago a Zionist without equivocation, will never deviate from that support. He promised to renationalise Royal Mail, rail, energy and water. He's still just about clinging on to rail, we think. The rest clearly too Corbyn-like to go down the same road off. He promised to defend freedom of movement. Now he wants to stop the boats too with a new border security command. Instead of doing the humane thing of opening up safe routes to asylum so nobody needs boats anymore and no more people drown in the channel. He promised to strengthen workers' rights and trade union rights, repealing the anti-trade union laws we've seen introduced over the last several decades. But that's been watered down too, pulling off the same con Tony Blair did because he promised all that too, to just those most recently introduced by the Tories. And again, You've only got his word for that. And by now, if you aren't questioning the value of his word and how little value there is to it, then there is probably little hope that you ever will. He promised to scrap the charitable status of private schools. That is out now as well, despite these schools blatantly not being charities and very much for the elite. Now instead, choosing to impose VAT on them instead. He promised to scrap the cruel poverty-inflicting two-child benefit cap, but will now keep that choosing to intentionally leave nearly a quarter of a million kids in poverty as a result, for no good reason other than Rachel Reeves' fiscal rules won't allow for that money to be spent on this. Well, in that case, I think we need a better party with better fiscal rules then, because this is a choice. Those rules are completely arbitrary and based on nothing more than choice. This is just callous cruelty against people too young to vote. He promised to devolve powers from Westminster, but he can't even let his own local parties choose their own candidates, interfering at every level, but especially at parliamentary level. And possibly his biggest ever lie, though, was to provide opposition to the Tories, when in actuality he's taken Labour and become as much like them as he possibly could. And above all else, just like Jonathan Reynolds there, he will deny it all until he's blue in the face, will not take responsibility will not acknowledge his actions and his mistakes, will point at others because when things go wrong, nothing is ever Keir Starmer's fault. There will never be any answers for any of this from Keir Starmer or anyone campaigning for Labour or for election as a Labour MP because any attempt to cover up or dismiss or dispute the lies he's told will be lies themselves. And so often or not, we've all got the receipts and we can expose the lies for what they are. More often than not, they've happened on video. Labour is utterly reliant on being the get the Tories out vote because they stand for nothing and will stand for nothing in effect throughout this campaign. So there's nothing they say, nothing that will be written in their manifesto, no matter how costed they claim it to be, no matter how fantastic it might appear, can be believed because of how big a liar leads the party. This will, I hope, be brought up 
again and again and again. And to Starmer's face at that, especially in TV debates, because he's been given an easy ride for far too long, and now he needs to face a reckoning for what he's been up to. Meanwhile, as the Labour selection contest continues in Islington North to replace Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn himself faces expulsion for... Well, when you drill down into it, as I have in this video recommendation here, the crime of being a socialist. But that said, we are hearing today that Jez is about to announce that he's going to stand as an independent for Islington North. So expulsion, well, I'll be damned at this point if that comes out before this goes out. But that's the way things are at time of writing. He hasn't done it yet. Anyway, have a watch. Stay with the channel some more. Find something else to watch. I'm sure there's plenty to see. There's loads of videos there and I'll hopefully catch you on the next one. Cheers, folks.